Welcome to episode 37 of Discovering Nagasaki from Local. My name is Chad. In my ongoing weekly vlogs, you can experience everyday life in this scenic and fascinating part of Japan. This week, Denise Rollheiser, Daniel Hazen, and Kathy Carrot were able to correctly answer both of last week's vlog questions. Thank you for answering my challenging questions. The first question from last week was, which four fruits did I use in my fruit buns? The answer is amanatsu, lemon, raisins, and cranberries. The second question from last week was, what is the name of the Shinto shrine at the harbor that I showed you in Sonogi? The answer is the Yasaka shrine. Recently, I made a couple of vlog errors, one in episode 36 and one in episode 33. In episode 36, I mistakenly said that Sonogi was in Nishi Sonogi. In fact, Sonogi is in Higashi Sonogi. In episode 33, I said that the Yomogi buns should be baked at 115 degrees Celsius. Actually, they should be baked at 215 degrees Celsius. Last weekend, my wife Yasko had an exhibition for her oil paintings at Omura's Mirayon Library. The Mirayon Library opened a year and a half ago in October 2019, and it has an excellent facilities. It has three floors, lots of study space, a large selection of books, a museum, a cafe, Wi-Fi throughout the building, and an exhibition hall. The exhibition hall is used for movies, presentations, meetings, and art. More than 150 people attended Yasko's painting exhibition in Mirayon's exhibition hall. And because of that, it was a great success. And now it's time for today's crash course in kanji. Group X kanji root particles include broom, interval, douse, cleanse, copper, tang dynasty, sin, paintbrush, concurrent, you, and content. I will cover group Y kanji root particles next week. There are only two more kanji root particle groups after this one. Anyone who has an interest in Japanese food, fine arts, or martial arts will benefit from a basic knowledge of kanji. Please support this vlog channel by clicking on the subscribe button below ringing the adjacent bell for updated notifications and clicking the thumbs up button. In today's vlog, I will show you how my seedlings are doing and a new plot of land where I will transplant many of them later this spring. I will also give you a Hanami tour of the cherry blossoms in Omoto Park. Let's get started. Now that spring has arrived, the vegetables in our backyard garden are growing quickly. The cherry blossoms are now out in full bloom above this retaining wall. They're about a week ahead of schedule. We have three cherry trees next to our house. Three weeks after I planted these string bean seedlings, they've emerged from the soil. A few of the pumpkin seedlings have done the same thing, but the crows have been getting in the way. I had to cover the pumpkin seedlings with green netting to keep them away. Further down you can see a few of our okra sprouts and some more string beans. The soybeans just started sprouting a few days ago along with the beets. The cucumber and zucchini seedlings are growing quickly and so far they haven't been attacked by slugs. The red and yellow mini tomato seedlings are clearly visible and so are the arugula seedlings. However, the eggplant, asparagus, paprika, and bell pepper seedlings are not in any hurry to make an appearance. Finally, our Swiss chard and parsley seedlings are growing quickly. Of the 35 trays I planted, the arugula seedlings were the first to appear. Here you can see how large our onions and sky beans have become. On this side of the garden, we have a lot of healthy lettuce, broccoli, cabbage, and carrots. Those two cherry trees on the retaining wall really stand out at this time of year. I'll head this way and show you the view from the back of the garden. A lot of the vegetables on this side of the garden have already gone to seed. 
I just filled the tractor up with diesel for today's plowing and the jerry can is still on top. Right next to this recently plowed plot of land are two plots of farmland that I'm going to plow with my tractor today. A farmer by the name of Miyazaki-san has allowed me to use his land this year to grow some vegetables. This spot is about three and a half kilometers from my farm and I just spent 20 minutes driving my tractor here. That works out to about 12 kilometers per hour. I intend to grow a lot of pumpkins and winter squash in this soil here. I've already plowed all of the top section and most of the lower section with my tractor. Now I only have a small strip of land to plow before I'm finished. I won't do it today, but in the near future I will use a cultivator to dig some deep furrows in this soil. Most of the farmers in this area have electrical wires set up around their fields. These wires are hooked up to a car battery and this handle down here is used to disconnect and reconnect the wire safely. This area is home to many Inushishi wild boar and they can do a lot of damage if they get into a farmer's field. They especially like to eat sweet potatoes, corn and carrots, but they'll eat just about anything if they're hungry. I'll get on the tractor now and finish plowing this last section. According to Miyazaki-san, this area hasn't been used for farming for several years. I'll start up the tractor and set it in motion. There were quite a few rocks in the upper section, but this lower section doesn't have that many. Even though this tractor has more than 14 horsepower, it moves at a snail space when it's plowing. I have to keep an eye on the path ahead and the depth of my rear tiller below. When I finish this plowing, the soil will be soft enough for my pumpkins and togan roots to anchor themselves in. Here's another look at the soil that I turned today. Compared to most other vegetables, pumpkins and winter squash need a lot of space to grow. This year they'll have lots of space. Now that the plowing is done, it's time to drive this tractor back home along these narrow and winding back roads. As I drive my tractor back home, I wanted to show you these lanterns strung between these roadside cherry trees. Although these cherry blossoms won't last for longer than 10 days, they make a vivid impression. I'm now in Omura Park. Behind these azalea blossoms is a shobu or iris garden. The iris garden is surrounded by cherry trees that are now in full bloom. There aren't many people around these hanami vendors right now, but there will be in an hour or so. In English, hanami means flower viewing, and these are the flowers that people want to view in early spring, before they quickly disappear. Sakura. This is the main bridge in Amora Park. As I pan to the left, you can see the cherry trees, the gazebos, the pond, and a few people on the bridge. On this lower deck, you can see another gazebo on the other side of the pond, and many cherry trees. Down below in the water, some bora or mullet fish are waiting for someone to throw some bread or popcorn into the water. You sure get a great view of the park from here. Now I'll give you a hanami view of this park from one of its gazebos. 
From here you can see the main bridge that I showed you earlier. Usually this pond has ducks, turtles, swans, and herons, but there aren't any here today. Right next to this entrance with the no parking sign is a very large and colorful cherry tree. It stands out because of the red toadies behind it. Right next to this iris garden are two very different cherry trees standing side by side. The first tree in front is a regular Zakura tree, and the second tree on my left is an Amora Zakura tree with larger, pinker, and more plentiful petals. Here's another close up of some cherry blossoms and a shot of another iris garden with Amora Castle's watchtower or Yagura in the background. Here's another entrance to Omoto Park along Route 34. On my left is a large Fujidana or Wisteria trellis. The two largest Sakura trees in Omoto Park are right here. I'll give you a closer look at the blossoms of one of these trees. I'll take you down this path up ahead under a canopy of cherry blossoms. This path runs along the southeast side of Amoda Park parallel to this road on the left. After a short distance it connects with this wider footpath. From here, Amoda Bay is about 150 meters in the distance. As you can see on my right, there are many vendors set up on the other side of this iris garden. This is a view of the iris garden beside Omoda Castle's Yagura. The cherry blossoms are very conspicuous in front of the castle walls. Behind me is the footpath that I showed you earlier. And on my left is a large tori leading to the interior grounds of Omoda Castle. In about a week the ground here will be covered with the petals of these cherry blossoms. They don't last for long. Next to this tori is a short tunnel leading to several park vendors, and behind me is a stairway leading up to a Shinto shrine. The leaves on these branches have already come out alongside the cherry blossoms. Here are some vendors along this iris garden in Omura Park. The first vendor is selling wickerware, bamboo, utensils and toys. The second vendor is selling pottery. The third vendor is selling inohoyaki. The fourth vendor is selling plum-shaped flowered anko. The fifth vendor is selling coffee and tea. And beside her is a blacksmith selling some knives and farming tools. To complete my Hanami tour of Amora Park, I will show you what the cherry blossom canopy over this road looks like from a moving bicycle. And now for this week's challenging questions. First, why is there a wire around the field that I plowed with my tractor? Second, how many tores did I videotape myself going under in Omoda Park? Be the first to correctly answer both of these questions in the comment section below. I will announce the first three people who do so at the beginning of episode 38. You can find a complete list of the contents of my vlog episodes on the Facebook link listed below and you can watch all of my vlog episodes on the online YouTube playlist. 
Today's B-roll involved farming, so in episode 38, my B-roll will involve cooking. See you next week.